Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault 2, and I'm coming to you tonight with another Garage Gun Talk. And I just got done doing the Texas Gun Vault poll question of the week, got all that edited, uploaded, and ready to go out tonight. And I'm actually out here getting ready to go to the range, because I tried to go to the range twice this weekend, but it was a holiday weekend over the Thanksgiving break, and the range was just packed, even the little kind of private VIP lanes that I go to. So I'm going to go later at night and hopefully there's not going to be family and people and all this kind of stuff because I really can't film and I don't like to be around people that obviously are kind of gun novices and I just want to have some time to be able to film uh, footage for range reports and the two guns I'm going to be taking tonight are two of my personal guns because I'm doing a series on the guns of my personal carry rotation. I'm doing range reports on them talking about the things that I like and don't like and how I kind of personally carry them and what I think um, the applications are of them and the philosophy of use of them are. And the gun, or one gun I'm taking to the ranch tonight is this one right here. The Glock 26. The famous Glock subcompact. And I already know something that I'm going to talk about in the range report that is going to pretty much blow some people's minds and they're going to get all pissed off about it. Because every time I review a Glock 26 or talk about a Glock 26... I always use the word obsolete. Now, I love this gun. I personally carry this gun. I think I shoot this gun pretty well, and I trust my life to it. But I make the argument that this gun is an obsolete gun. And I guess it's just because maybe the average intelligence of many gun owners is a little bit lower. And I know I sound a little bit elitist saying that. But I think that sometimes gun owners in general, especially people that like Glocks, and I consider myself someone that loves Glocks, but I guess that's why people call them Glock tards, is they cannot wrap their, their minds around the fact that words have very specific meanings. And they get their panties all in a twist because I'm going to use the word, as I said, obsolete or obsolescence because this gun is an artifact of the 1990s during the assault weapons ban. I believe this gun came out in 1996 when the biggest capacity you could have was 10 rounds here in the United States. And so Glock kind of designed this subcompact gun around that for concealed carry. And I think today there are many better options. Guns that have come out after this that are smaller, like the SIG P365. There are guns that have uh, optics cuts. Now, I do know there are some Glock 26s that have optics cuts. But in general, we have other guns that just are designed around that and have a smaller footprint in general. They're thinner. They're shorter. So they conceal better than this sized gun. We have... Subcompact guns that have accessory rails, if you want, want to run a laser or a light, you can't do that on a Glock 26. Um, I think the ergonomics of some other guns that have come out since this gun, especially a lot of the modern offerings, are better than the Glock 26. And I still like this gun. I still carry this gun. But I use the term obsolete. But obsolete does not mean ineffective, it doesn't mean inaccurate, it doesn't mean any of those things. But I already know in my range report, I am going to talk about how I think this gun, in general, is an obsolete gun. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy it, it doesn't mean that you, if you own it, you've made a poor choice or wasted your money. Because as I said, I literally own and carry this and like this gun. But people just can't wrap their head around that. Because I already know people are going to say, That gun's not obsolete! Are you going to stand in front of it and be shot? Doesn't mean it's obsolete. Well, you know, you're not going to want to stand in front of a, you know, like, uh, what is it, like a 1860 Colt Army black powder pistol either, right? But I think we could all agree that that gun is obsolete. It doesn't mean irrelevant. It doesn't mean you can't own it. It doesn't mean you shouldn't own it. It doesn't mean it can't be an effective weapon. It just means that it is obsolete because different things have come out since. And you can still appreciate guns of the, of the past. And I know this might sound a little bit elitist on this rant tonight, but it's because I already know what some people are going to say. Because I think this is the one I'm going to work on first. I'm going to you know, film the footage tonight, and I'll probably try to film the garage portion maybe uh, tomorrow. Um, and But anyway, I already know what the people are going to say. They're just going to say, you're an idiot, that gun's not obsolete. 
And it just, it just goes to show a couple things that I've kind of whined and complained about on this channel. That so many gun owners, I think, are... Um, they, they either lack, you know, personal confidence uh, in their own choices or they always feel like they have to be reassured. You know, I've reviewed so many guns in the past that sometimes I get comments about, I just went out and bought this gun. And let's say it's a gun that I have a negative response with, okay? Um, a gun that I don't shoot well and go, well, you know, maybe I give it three stars or less or I have problems with it, has some failures with it, and I document that. Somebody who literally just went out and bought the gun is going online looking for confirmation bias. They're trying to find reviews of people that like the guns. And they're like, oh, I bought the best gun out there. I am so smart. I am so good. I am so proud of my choice. And that's fine. However, you're going to find that not everyone is like you. And you might find contradictory evidence or experiences or anecdotes from other people. And... I do this all the time. You know, I'll, I'll watch a video on a, on a gun, you know, Glock 26 or whatever. Or I say, not, I shouldn't say a Glock 26. Let's say a, a different gun that I love, okay? Like the Beretta 92 Compact, okay? I think the Beretta 92 Compact is an awesome gun. I, I love it. But I will watch a video and somebody will say, eh, it's not a very good gun for its size. The Glock 19 is better. I'm not as accurate with it or whatever. And let's just say I have a very positive experience with that gun. I can look at that and go, hmm, I'm sorry that they, they don't feel that way, but maybe there's something going on that the way that they hold or their style. But that's okay because I'm confident in my choice and what I like and what I shoot. It doesn't matter if someone else comes up to me and says, the Beretta 92 Compact is the worst gun ever created you know, by human hands. Okay. I mean, I, I don't get upset about it. I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to feel uh, that somebody is slamming me for my choice uh, to carry that gun or to like that gun or to shoot that gun or to own that gun. But people are going to get all upset when I use the word obsolete on this. Who knows? I might even get some on this video, but I doubt it because most people that follow me here on the Texas Gun Vault 2 and not on the main channel, um, you guys, I think, understand this. You guys are a little bit above most other, other gun owners because you guys understand the nuances of arguments and we're just here to, to talk guns and not get into fights, right? But when this thing comes out probably in about a month on the main channel, you guys be prepared. Get ready for comment after comment after comment saying, you're an idiot, I turned this, this review off after 10 seconds, that gun's not obsolete. And they're going to say like, would you want to be on the receiving end of a bullet from that? I carry it... Because people are so sensitive. Why are gun owners so freaking sensitive? I see it on my main channel all the time. It's like, dude, I'm, I'm sorry that you disagree with my opinion on that gun. But I documented. I showed you what happened. It's what it is, right? Man, you are free to buy any gun. I mean, I don't like kel -Tec. I talk, I joke about it all the time. The guns fall apart in my hand. I've literally had them fall apart in my hand at the range. I think they're, they feel like a toys to me. But the people that buy Caltex and love Caltex, that's fine. I, I, if you like Caltex, go buy as many of them as you like. I think it's great. I think Caltex should be in business. They should sell their guns. They can do everything they, that they want to do. And you can buy every Caltex model that they have and own 70 of them. I don't care. I really don't. And I'm glad they work out for you. But I'll get get the people on there. In fact, uh, I had somebody comment recently going, you don't like Keltex? Well, that says a lot about your channel. I'm never coming back to this channel again. Okay. I, I get it. Okay. You don't, you like Keltex and I don't. Um, but, <laughs> and you're just mad that I don't like it and you feel like it's a personal slam. But l tell me in the comment section, do you guys see this in the gun world? Do you find that gun owners are way too sensitive about critical reviews of guns that they like or especially guns that they own? They assume that if somebody dislikes a gun that they shoot well or they own, that it's a personal slam against them, that they have been dissed in some way and they have to stand up for that gun. They have to stand up for the honor of that gun. I have to defend it. Instead of going... You know, they don't like it, but I love mine because that's the way that I approach it. I, I like to consider myself to be mature on this topic, right? There's plenty of guns that I like and own that you guys have stated that you don't like. Um, for example, the um, 
Uh, a lot of people, uh, when I did that unboxing of the uh, LWRC SMG45, you know, I always get people, you need to go watch Garantham's video on that. I'm like, I've already seen it. I don't care. I don't care if at 100 yards it has uh, a point of impact shift by 2 inches. I could care less. You know why? Because I love that gun. I think that gun is so cool. It's mechanically interesting. I think it looks so freaking cool. I don't care. You can come to me and say, that gun has the pattering of a shotgun. I don't care. Because of why? I love it. You don't have to buy it, right? But I, but I love it. And so many people, it doesn't hurt my, my feelings. It doesn't hurt my, my feelings at all. But why do people get so sensitive about the guns that they own and carry and feel like they have to defend them? I don't know. Maybe I see this as a content creator more than you guys. But have you guys seen this in the gun world? Why are gun owners so sensitive? Tell me in the, in the comment section. And do you understand my argument about the obsolescence of the Glock 26? Remember, obsolete does not mean ineffective or that it doesn't do the job or it's inaccurate or it's inferior. It just means that there have been firearms that have been made after this that do everything this gun does but better. Accessory rails, thinner, more capacity in a smaller package. It's still a great gun. And obviously, I carry it and I like it. I can actually say I love the gun. But I can admit it's obsolete. You know, it's the same thing with with cars. You know, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, me and my father restored a 1969 Camaro. I love first generation Camaros. I think they are cool and sexy. And I love them. However, I can admit that a lot of things have changed since 1967 and through 1969. We have way better suspension systems. We have better, you know, fuel injection systems. We have um, just better amenities. We have engines today that can get much more uh, power out of a smaller displacement. Uh, we just have so much going on because technology advances over time. The first generation Camaro is obsolete, but it's still cool. I love to see them. I love to work on them. I love to drive them. I think they're really cool, but they're obsolete. You know, if that makes any sense. So anyway, what do you guys think? Is the Glock 26 obsolete? And whether or not you agree with me on that assessment, do you understand the argument that I'm making about obsolete? And why do you think gun owners are so insensitive? No, I'm sorry, not insensitive, so sensitive and insensitive to others, shall we say. Yeah, gun owners are just so sensitive. They feel like, like they have to defend the guns that they own and buy. Like, I went out and bought this. I have to find every positive review to reassure me that I made the right choice. No, you, no, no, you don't. Are you happy with the gun? Okay. If no, well, why not? If yes, why? You, you need one of those little flow charts, right? And if in the end you're happy with it because it shoots well for you, it carries well for you, it's reliable for you, you like the way it looks, then don't listen to anybody else that says they don't like it. Just ignore it. That's what, that's what I do. That's what a mature person should do. But anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about tonight. But I got to go and get to the range. It's getting a little bit late. And I uh, got to go review this on a Colt Lightweight 1911. So let me know in the comment section below. And I forgot to do the word of the day in the last video. And some people called me out on it. So if you made it to the end of today's video, okay, I want you to use the word, mm, I would say obsolete, but I think a lot of people are going to use that in the comments anyway regarding this gun that might not watch to the end. Use the word mm, sensitive, sensitive, because so many gun owners are so sensitive about getting confirmation bias and making sure other people like the guns that they own so they feel confident in their own purchases. So anyway, I'm curious to see what you guys are going to say and have any ideas and think anything you guys say regarding this because I'll be talking about it in a future range report. So, as always, don't be sensitive and thanks for watching.